This model is the CBN 79. It's the second of the Ford class. Uh, Gerald R. Ford is in the final preparations to go to sea for the first time here in the next few days. And this ship is about 30% complete and will follow Ford to sea in probably around 2025. Uh, in time to replace the USS Nimitz, the first of the Nimitz-class ships that will retire after 50 years of service life. So what you see, we bought back margin that allows us to put more things in the ship that we haven't even thought about, where in the Nimitz-class we're starting to run out of that margin. In other words, we, if we want to put something new in the Nimitz-class, we have to take something off so that we can put the new uh, GWIZ equipment aboard. With Ford, we designed it with this expansion of capabilities in mind. We included more electrical power, electrical gener power generation capability, three times more electrical power generation capability. We added more air conditioning capability because you know all of our equipment anymore is electronic and you need to keep the not only the people cool, but the electronics cool so that they'll operate. All of those features plus uh, investments in materials that would allow us to do less maintenance on the ship during its lifetime, allow us to save about 10% of the total ownership cost over that 50 years when we compare it to Nimitz. The capacity of the ship also increased in terms of war fighting. You just think about 25 or 33% more capability at 10% less cost throughout the total lifetime. That's what we bought with these ships. And when you look at the Ford class compared to the Nimitz, the, the probably the only thing that you will know, recognize as being different is the fact that we moved the island aft. The simple change of moving the island aft opened up a lot of air space, or uh, deck space here forward of the island that now can be used to turn, or, turn the airplanes around, to do their maintenance, to do their arming, to do the refueling. We also did some other features that you can't re readily see. And that is now when the airplanes land and taxi into that area and park to get their servicing, we don't have to drag hoses for fuel all the way across the flight deck. We have put index stations for fuel and electrical component and electrical uh, uh, power so that you can start working on the airplane immediately after the pilot parks it. That alone is really what caused us to have that extra capacity in terms of numbers of flights per day when you compare it to the Nimitz class. Good morning. Uh, this is the first time that Huntington Ingalls Industries and Ingalls Shipbuilding Division of Huntington Ingalls Industries has rolled out the, the model of the LHA eight class of ship, which is uh, a, a vast improvement on the LHA-6 America class. The primary difference between the LHA-8 and the LHA-6 is the reintroduction of the well deck uh, into the ship, which will allow two LCACs to be able to be embarked on board uh, the ship, which transports the Marine Corps' equipment, uh, vehicles, personnel ashore. Uh, which is one of the things that the Marine Corps and the Navy has, have liked the most about uh, the, the reintroduction of, of LH-8. Uh, in order to be able to uh, accommodate the, the well deck in the ship and the, two, the introduction of the two LCACs into LHA-8, uh, there's been several modifications made to the LHA-6 America class, which have included making a uh, smaller uh, but more efficient island inside the ship, uh, which allows for more space to be made, which allows the uh, ability to retain the great features of the uh, F-35 capability on board the America class. But in doing so, uh, several other features have been made which uh, allows for a wider sponson for aircraft parking and also for uh, ordnance uh, assembly on board the ship. So. Um, the LHAA takes uh, a lot of the great features, the aviation features of the America class, but improves on that and makes uh, the reintroduction of the, the well deck to accommodate either a, a utility landing uh, craft ship or two LCACs. From the TAC Air perspective, we've got our Block 3 Super Hornet, which is, which is a, uh, a series of upgrades that we're putting into what's out in the fleet today, the Block 2. 
to bring more capability to the to the fleet. There's it's a it's a compilation of I guess five separate systems and stuff. The the most obvious would be the conformal fuel tanks to bring more persistence and more range to the platform, less drag because you can take the the wing tanks off and the pylons that hold those wing tanks off, so the aircraft is in a can perform a lot better, stay on station a lot longer, or go further in range. Um, part of the what we would call part of the systems that would go into the block three would be the long wave erst what we call a block two infrared search and track system will be part of that. We've got new computers and data link systems going into the airplane so that F-18, Growlers, E-2D, all on that same TPNT network can pass data, um, large quantities of data. It's a very high bandwidth data that will allow you to fuse real-time information into um, weapons quality track files and stuff for uh, for different threats out there. We're doing a little bit of touch up on some of the RCS uh, treatments we do on the airplane to keep its RCS at a level we think is good enough. We're not, uh, we're not trying to compete with F-35 from a stealth perspective, but we do have a fairly stealthy platform. And for the missions we need to do for the Navy, uh, we just want to make sure we're maintaining that right margin of stealthiness so that'll go into it and, and keep the survivability uh, where we need it to be in the aircraft. And then also as part of Block 3, you get a 9,000 hour airframe. So we're taking a lot of stuff we're learning as we're getting ready to take the Navy's inventory of Super Hornets Block 2 and extend their life so they meet, make it out into the next couple of decades. The uh, cockpit is a brand new all glass uh, advanced cockpit system taking a uh, 10 by 19 inch display, high definition kind of display with the right kind of processors behind it to better display all this information coming into the cockpit now. So Super Hornet Block 3 becomes what we refer to as a smart node out there on the network. It's fusing a lot of information. We've got the new processor that's got a fusion engine on it, pulling in Earth data, ESM data and stuff. And now you need a way to display it. So we have here a small Cicada uh, disposable micro UAV. So this is basically a flying circuit board for ground sensor and placement. Uh, this has a meteorological payload in it. So if you drop this aircraft from something else in the sky, uh, another UAV, a weather balloon, um, out of a canister like the one behind me, these individual Cicadas fly to a specific location on the ground and take data while they're falling. So in this case, it has two control surfaces to guide itself. It turns and makes a heading change. And then internally it has the sensors to measure on the fall down, pressure, temperature, humidity, a wind profile. And then once it's on the ground, it has a small antenna built into the circuit board that it can send the data back out to whoever needs it. This is a concept for launching kind of like a sauna buoy does. Uh, first thing that happens after this tube is ejected, a parachute wind flap pulls and the parachute decelerates the whole assembly. This large tube is around the outside and falls away. That's the protective shield. And then individually the cicadas are held in here with a single pin at the bottom. So the pin pulls and these rails uh, open up like clamshells and all of the cicadas fall out. And they really do fall and tumble and sometimes they hit but bounce and fly away individually.